I have no clue how to get a high score on the TOEFL reading. I keep scoring 21 or 22 or lower when I practice. I can't finish the section on time because every time I take a practice test, there are usually three or four super challenging questions that take up most of my time. I hate the insert text question type. How am I supposed to know where to put a sentence in the paragraph if I'm not the author? And the summary question just kills me. The options they offer are all so similar. I'm so confused by all these advanced words. Do the TOEFL makers expect me to know about space, geology, archaeology, or art history in English? I know all the strategies, but I still make mistakes when it comes to doing practice tests. What should I do? These are just some of the typical questions TOEFL students bombard me with when it comes to the reading section. In our TOEFL prep course, we have the pro package, which gives students a consultation with me at the end of the course. Its purpose is to evaluate their speaking and writing skills and give them a score they are likely to get on the day of the test. But the funny thing is that about 60% of the time, students who come to these sessions ask me to focus on the reading instead because they 1. can't consistently get the score they need, 2. fail to finish all the questions on time, 3. don't understand the academic words they come across, 4. can't effectively use the strategies they learned for every question type, and 5. often overthink the questions. So, if you're a TOEFL test taker and have no idea how to tackle the TOEFL reading section, this is the video for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more test taking tips and click the bell icon to be notified when the next video comes out. Today, we're going to analyze a passage from the TOEFL reading section so that you can see for yourself that this section is not as scary as it may seem. We'll analyze the question types, review the strategies for them, and most importantly, learn how to apply these strategies to real tests. If you're watching this video now and want to know the templates that make up half of your answers and allow you to score high on the TOEFL speaking and writing sections, click on the link down below. You can choose the pro package if you want to have your essays and speaking responses scored. I personally find this option the most helpful because I'll tell you exactly what you are doing wrong and what you should do differently to get a higher score. I often see students with a good level of English who could have scored high, but they just do the wrong things and keep scoring low. And very often, there are just a few little things that stand between them and getting the score they really deserve. For example, in many consultations, we practice the first question of the speaking section, and I show how to break it down into several steps. That way, when you have 45 seconds to speak, you no longer panic, but know exactly what to say. I'm even starting to think about sharing some of these tips on this channel because I feel like it would have made many students' lives a lot easier. Let me know if you'd find that interesting. The passage we'll cover today is about the rise of Teotihuacan, an ancient city near Mexico City. On the day of the test, you'll have two passages like this with 10 questions after each. You can watch my other video where I discuss a different passage about the westward migration for more practice. If you have problems with advanced vocabulary or want to test how well you know it, feel free to check out these three videos. Back to our passage. Don't read the text. Go straight to the first question. If you're a fast reader, you might go through the passage first, but in my experience, it's not necessary. This is a negative factual information question because we see the word except. This means that we need to find what information is not given in the text. For this type of question, look at the answer options and then read the paragraph. As always, pause the video and answer the question yourself first. Then continue watching to see if you're right. The correct answer is two, several administrative centers spread across the city. The text mentions an administrative center, but not several centers spread across the city. An indefinite article equals one. 
The other options are all listed as features of the city. Remember, information in the text will usually be paraphrased. For example, regularly arranged streets, a regular grid pattern of streets and buildings, many manufacturing workshops, a large number of industrial workshops, apartment complexes, over 2,000 apartment complexes. To recap, for this question type, it's much easier to look through the options, identify the keywords, and then read the paragraph, already having in mind what you're looking for. Question two, vocabulary question. I always say that there are two types of vocabulary questions. The ones where you know the word in question, and in this case, finding the right answer is usually a piece of cake. And the ones where you don't know the word. Such questions are more challenging. A typical mistake many students make is only trying to guess the meaning of the unfamiliar word from context. Very often, context won't give you much information about the word's meaning. So, apart from doing that, you might also try to analyze the word itself. Look at its prefix, suffix, and root. Now, take your time to answer this question. Ingenuity is a noun. An adjective is ingenious. A genius is a person who is very clever, which means that ingenious is someone who shows creativity and talent and is very smart. So, ingenuity is cleverness. Don't confuse the adjective ingenious with a similar adjective, ingenuous. An ingenuous person is innocent and unsuspecting. Three, another negative factual information question. We need to find a statement that's not mentioned in the text. So start by analyzing the statements first and then read the paragraph. The right answer is three, a long period of volcanic inactivity in the Teotihuacan Valley. Remember that you're looking for the option that is not stated in the text. Many students often get so excited to find the first statement in the text that they mark it as the right option and move on. That's why they capitalize words like not and except in the text. To eliminate one option, you need to find all other three statements in the text. Let's find them. The presence of obsidian in the Teotihuacan Valley. The obsidian resources in the valley itself. For the record, Obsidian is a dark natural glass that looks like this. The potential for extensive irrigation of Teotihuacan Valley lands. The valley's potential for extensive irrigation. Irrigation is when we water land or crops. Teotihuacan's location on a natural trade route. Geographic location on a natural trade route to the south and east of the Valley of Mexico. 4. An inference question. In this type of question, you need to draw a conclusion based on the text. For this particular question, I need to find what can be inferred from paragraph 3 about Cuicuilco prior to 200 BC. Prior means before. As I go through the paragraph, I try to break it into a few simple main ideas. The paragraph mentions that prior to 200 BC, Quiquilco was the largest of several relatively small centers in and near the Valley of Mexico. Around 200 BC, a volcanic eruption seriously affected Quiquilco, covering much of its agricultural land with lava. The eruption eliminated Quiquilco as a potential rival, enabling other towns including Teotihuacan, to emerge as leading economic and political centers. So the fact that Cuicuilco's agricultural land was destroyed eliminated it as a potential rival. This means that before 200 BC, its economy relied heavily on agriculture. So D is correct. Watch out for keywords 
especially those connected to time. They usually provide you with the key information to answer the question. 5. Another vocabulary question. Predominant is the strongest or main, so principal is the right answer. Again, if you don't know this word, think about the adjective dominant or the noun dominance. Both of them signify power and influence. This will make it easier for you to choose the correct synonym. If you struggle with academic vocabulary, you can watch this video and test how ready you are to take the TOEFL test. There, I use a lot of TOEFL vocabulary questions, so it's a great way to drill this type of question as well. Moving on. Question 6. Which of the following allow Teotihuacan to have a competitive edge over its neighbors? Let's read the full sentence and try to formulate the answer ourselves first. It seems likely that Teotihuacan's natural resources, along with the city elite's ability to recognize their potential, gave the city a competitive edge over its neighbors. So, there are two things that gave the city a competitive edge over its neighbors its natural resources, and the ability of the elite to recognize their potential. As I look through the answer options, I see that A is correct. This is a test on whether or not you know the word commodity. A commodity is any useful or valuable thing, especially something that is bought and sold. Grain, coffee, and precious metals are all commodities. So in this case, natural resources is a paraphrase of the word commodity. They were available, or readily available, and the elite could recognize their potential. They were well exploited. Question 7. This is a factual information question. In this type of question, you need to find detailed information based on the paragraph. For this question type, you should carefully read the question identify keywords, and then locate the right part of the paragraph and read it. It will usually be one to three sentences. Pause the video now and give it a try. The keywords are research, obsidian tools, and Almec sites. As I scan the paragraph, I see that recent research on obsidian tools found in Almec sites has shown that some of the obsidian obtained by the Almex originated near Teotihuacan. This means that they got obsidian from the place near Teotihuacan, which means the D is correct. Just for the record, if you keep reading, you'll see the word commodity used once again, so it's a useful word to know. 8. In paragraph 6, the author discusses the thriving obsidian operation in order to for this question, we need to find why the author discusses the thriving obsidian operation. So let's find it in the text. It's right in the second sentence. For this type of question, I usually suggest reading the sentence before and after the one that contains the information given. So let's read the first three sentences and find the right answer. Ready to check? I can see that the information in the question is given as an example. This means that it illustrates something given in the previous sentence. The picture of Teotihuacan that emerges is a classic picture of positive feedback among several factors. I can also see that all this led to increased wealth. So option C is correct. Moving on, time for my favorite question, insert text question. It's one of the most challenging questions for students, so in our course, we usually dedicate a lot of time to help you master it and complete it in a fast and effective way. The major problem with this question is that most students try to really understand the whole paragraph and waste a lot of time on that. So, even if they end up with the right answer, which they usually don't, they still spend too much time on the question and often have to rush later on. In this question type, you need to find where the sentence could be added to the passage. Take your time to answer this question. 
The right answer is D. In the last sentence of the paragraph, we learn that the city had economic and perhaps religious contacts with most parts of Mesoamerica. And then we add our sentence, which illustrates this fact. It provides examples of how far its contacts went. Finally, the summary question. You should complete the summary by selecting the three answer choices that express the most important ideas in the passage. For this question type, you should 1. Choose the major ideas. 2. Avoid options that are too general, which makes them irrelevant, and also options that are too specific, which makes them minor details. 3. Choose the options that contain several ideas mentioned in the text, ideally those that contain the main ideas of a few paragraphs. And 4. Avoid choosing two options that cover the same information. The right answers are A, D, and E. All these options contain many ideas that we already remember from doing the previous questions. If you don't remember any of them, you can always come back to the text and quickly scan each paragraph, looking for the main idea. It's not very difficult, as you already know many paragraphs well from doing questions 1 to 9. A small tip from me. As you go through the previous questions, Pause for a second as you move from one paragraph to another and think about the main idea of the paragraph you just covered. You can even write these main ideas down, very quickly obviously, as you go through the text. This will save you a lot of your time later when you do the summary question, as you won't need to go back to the text at this stage. This was half of the TOEFL reading section. On the real test, you get one more passage with the same question types. If you feel like practicing more, you can watch this video. To work in advanced vocabulary, watch these three videos. In fact, the word coerce that we saw in the text is part of one of these videos. Now, it's time to calculate your results. Write winner in the comments below if you answered all the questions correctly. If you made any mistakes, let me know which question types were the most difficult and how many correct answers you got overall. If you are currently preparing for the test and want to check how ready you are, click here to get your writing and speaking score. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and tricks on how to ace the TOEFL. And remember, scoring 100 plus on the TOEFL isn't rocket science. It's the little things you do that make all the difference. As always, I wish you all a stellar TOEFL score. Until next time.